Good evening again and welcome to Paul T's World. And in this episode, we're having a look at the front garden. What's in flower in the front garden in August? And first of all, and foremost, what have we got? We've got the hydrangeas. Let's have a look at the paniculata hydrangeas. I've got a variety of them. This one is the framboise, for obvious reason. The raspberry one. Very pretty, it started white and now it's developing the pink colour. In the distance there we've got the shocking pink lace cap hydrangea and I've decided in this bed to put just paniculatas and the one next to the framboise is candlelight. So this is the first year I've got them flowering at a slightly mature level to see what they're going to do. So obviously it also turns slightly pink through the season. And moving over to this one here, just behind the coleus. And here, this is the diamond rouge. Diamond rouge, so obviously I would ex be expecting that one to go fairly red. Now I've got some coleus, king coleus here, but they haven't done as well as I was hoping because they've been heavily eaten. I think it might be the wood pigeons. Not totally sure, but they're just not growing large. Little azalea there. Oh, and next to it we've got that quercifolia. the oak-leafed hydrangea, and this one's a dwarf silky. Lovely oak-shaped leaves, love it. And just in front is a pink diamond. Yes, I like this little row of paniculatas. I'm looking forward to them bulking up and filling this bed properly. There's the controversa here. with various tiers. It flowers white in the late spring. Sort of bracts really, bracts that stick up. I've popped in some hookahs and hostas just to see how they do and I'll see how I develop this in future. Not quite sure whether to put more hostas in I think I could fill this with hostas. It's been tough going with the coleus. We've either had a drought, a heat wave, or it's been really cold. So the coleus have not been too happy and have just not grown, as you can see here. In fact, there's a titchy one over there in the middle. A slightly better red one there. And then that one there but just not filling in. I would need hundreds of coleus, but they're not doing it. So um, maybe I'll concentrate on filling the gaps with hostas. Let's just go round the back of this cypress tree and see what we've got here. Now I have lined the edges with azaleas and I want them to totally fill these edges and preferably all at the edge here so that the birds don't keep throwing out this mulch that I've put on this bark. This uh, coleus is doing a little bit better. Nice striking one isn't it? 
and we've got two hydrangeas that are going to be quite large I think especially this one judging by its name Goliath Zazalia there it's looking good I bought that quite cheaply earlier on in the year it's doing well and I love this hosta here nice and bright and cheery however the yellowy leaves have gone white as we've had so much heat and sun recently so it's not looking as good as it did let's just have a general look at this border that I developed just last year and there's a big difference I'm going to make this potentilla here it's going to come out now I've never really got on with potentillas until they flower in July August and then they look nice but I feel they don't look good for the rest of the year so I'm afraid this one is going to come out and I've got just the paniculata to go in its place and also I've got this large hosta here it's been suffering a little bit from the drought it doesn't look as nice as say that previous one I looked at so that one is coming out as well and the light colored one I've just shown you I'm going to split that next year and so we've got a number of those so it's coming along very nicely I will have to replace some of the azaleas that one didn't survive the heat wave and the drought so I'll buy some at reduced price in uh, late late on in the year so now let's just go over to one of the beds that I'm really excited about and so are the bees and this is the bed here it's at the top of the steps and I showed it in a previous video and I decided I was going to make a bed with lots of spikes, spiky plants like this liastrus because the bees, particularly the bumblebees, absolutely love these. They don't have to fly very far. Once they get on one of these stems, they literally just walk up the stem. It's like having hundreds of flowers in one place. So I've got the liastrus. Uh, second year, it's tripled in size. Very pleased with that. I've got a gaura here. Um, it hasn't done quite so well. I planted that last year. These are the little Veronicas. They're over now, as you can see, but these were nice through the previous month. And all these snapdragons, these antirhinum, have self-seeded and I'm really pleased with them I love that in fact just look at this they have thrown out some seeds here so these are self-seeded antirhinums and they've decided to join in with my paniculata bed aren't they cute so I'm certainly not pulling those out because they just look so nice so let's get back to that border and have a look at these snapdragons let's see if I can snap them see let's just have a look you're supposed to be able to open them there we are that's how they open them you just press at either side snapdragon antirhinum everyone's grandma used to grow these in Britain and here are some more that have gone over here are the seeds and I'm going to leave those and let them seed and sometimes if they seed early in the season they actually seed grow and flower 
in the same season. So you get double the plants. So let's have a look at this bed from the other side. We'll just jump over the Eryngium. Here we are. So here is that bed that's designed for the bees, particularly the bumblebees. So I actually bought these snapdragons this year. Here are some of the osteospermum that these don't overwinter very well. So I would imagine I'll lose these over the winter. But look at these. Alstrom area. Absolutely gorgeous. Some of the Veronicas behind that are over. And this, I bought this last year, Monada. The bumblebees prefer this plant to all these others and they love the others. So I'm really pleased with this Monada. Yeah, this bed is coming along nicely and will only get better and better as they mature. I hope you've enjoyed this little look around the front garden in high summer in August in England and I'll see you next time in Paul T's World. Bye!